Every now and then, you know, we just kind of need to shake up the farmer forum, don't you think? We've got growers and leaders from Kansas and Minnesota ready to bring their perspectives on today's show. That's not unusual, but what might make today's show a bit different is pretty dang exciting. From the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast, this is Agritalk, agriculture's national talk show since 1994. Here's your host, Chip Flory. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Welcome to Agritalk. It's Wednesday. That means it's time for the Farmer Forum on Agritalk. From Kansas, we've got Ken McCauley set to call in. Ken is past president of the National Corn Growers Association, and he's still got his finger on the pulse of what's happening in farm policy development. From Minnesota, Kevin Papp is going to join us. Kevin is the current president of the Minnesota Farm Bureau. And now to change things up a bit. Mike Johans is the former governor of Nebraska, former senator from Nebraska, and a former secretary of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And Senator Johans will be joining us on today's show. I'm sure that Ken and Kevin have got some questions, and he might even have a question or two for Kevin and Ken. Okay, and we want you to be part of the conversation, too. Give us a call. It's 855-4-TALK-AG. That's 855-482-5524. If you'd rather send a tweet, just include hashtag Agritalk so that I will be sure to see it. Let's head to the Farm Journal studios for an update on the news with Clinton Griffiths. Clinton, how you doing today, buddy? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Good. You know, we got to – I'll tell you what, Chip. I walked outside this morning. We're supposed to be in the 50s today. Yeah. And it's the first day, and I always count this day, is the first day where you step outside and you go, oh – it can be nice here. Spring <laughs> might actually happen. It might happen. <laughs> I tell you what, we're supposed to be 50 degrees over here in northeast Iowa today, too. And uh, we've still got a lot of snow that needs to melt yeah, off. There's there's eight or, ten inches, eight or ten inches out in the front yard here at the office. My it's, gosh. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's only April. No rush. You know, R- there's still time. R- right. There's okay. still time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, dude, I did something really cool last night. Yeah, I saw on Twitter you kind of uh, were yeah. in the middle of it or uh, stepping in some things uh, last uh, night, weren't you? Man, it was fun. It, it it was so much fun. We had the first ever summit of the candidates for the Iowa Ag Secretary. Now, I was a little bit different. I was a little bit different than most states. We elect our Ag Secretary, and our last. Ag Secretary, or the Secretary be- before sure. appointed Secretary Mike Nag, who who is our current Secretary, uh, Bill Northy. Right. He's uh, kind of got a new gig. Yeah, he's got a new gig. And not only that, but he has elevated the position of Ag Secretary hmm. in the state of Iowa. Interesting. Uh, not saying that we didn't have good ones before. Okay, I'm not saying that. But Bill kind of changed the whole position. And uh, the guys that were at the um, the uh, summit last night, Ray Gasser, Chad Ingalls, Craig Lang, Dan Zumba, and uh, Tim Gannon, uh-huh. um, they know that they've got big shoes to fill. Yeah, yeah. You, they, they really do. You can tell they are so committed to it. But when you put together a list like I just read off there, mm-hmm. uh, we've got real leaders in this state that are stepping up and they're putting their name on the ballot and uh they're going they they want this position. It's not like they just decided, well, hey, you know, yeah, I'll that, just throw my name I had a um, yeah, yeah. hat ring here, no, see what happens. They yeah. they all know why this position is so important in the state of Iowa now. And uh, sure. uh, they're excited about it. Yeah. They're excited about it. So good, yeah, good, was, uh, good conversation. What was your yes. what, what do you, what do you think was the best topic? Well, you know, water quality here in the state of Iowa is such a huge issue because of the lawsuit that we had with sure. the Des Moines Water Works against a uh, um, uh, uh, couple water, water districts. Water district, thank you. And um, so, water quality was definitely high on the. Uh, 
on on the priority list of issues that not only I wanted to talk about with them, but but they wanted to talk about it. Conservation, rules and regs, right? Uh, animal agriculture. It's so important in the state of Iowa. And I'm telling you, they are, they're all hitting on the right notes with this, uh, with, with their attitude towards what's going on in the state. What needs to happen? What needs to happen in the state? It was a great event last night. And thanks to the Fayette County uh, Corn Growers for putting that on. There were some, some other counties that helped with the effort, sure, but Fayette sure. County was hosting it. We're, uh, give me a minute's worth of news here. Okay, what's going real quick. on? Uh, yep. U.S. Trade Representative's Office sending a message that it's ready to reveal that uh, completed revised trade agreement with South Korea. Cool. Uh, it's an approach that Trump used uh, – uh, kind of a win for him, but it's very unconventional approach. Uh, and it had some farm state lawmakers like Missouri's Claire McCaskill squirming a little bit earlier. I think it is throwing ag under the bus. So, it, but it, it worked out. Former Department of Ag Trade Chief uh, in the Clinton administration, Paul Drazik, arguing that South Korea was already willing to rework course before those steel tariffs were announced and argues that China's willingness now to talk may be... Uh, in there, may, it may result in very little, but he concedes. If it works, uh, more power to them. But I, I think it's bad negotiating tactics. Uh, I think, you know, it may work once. I don't know if it'll work twice. Uh, and I don't know how effective it's going to be in terms of the overall objective of getting the, the trade deficit to zero. Yeah, some uh, pretty strong words there. Uh, there's yeah. also talk that the president is going to look at uh, using similar tactics on NAFTA, now saying he wants real uh, work done on that before May, or uh, those uh, tariffs will be back on mm-hmm. for Canada and Mexico. Interesting. Interesting. Can't win from winning right now, can he? That's right. <laughs> that's, that's right you know just exactly. a lot of skepticism you know we've we've you been bet. standing on the sidelines here watching this yep. just a lot of a lot of questions very cool thanks we'll talk to you later sounds Clinton. good all right it's time to hear from the editors at ag pro margie Yackelkamp is the editor of ag pro margie how you doing good morning chip i am soggy and cool and planting seems weeks away <laughs> it does doesn't it man oh man hey uh machine repeat greg peterson and i were talking about the used sprayer market on monday's show what's been some of the advancements on new sprayers that that's got guys looking to at the new rigs yeah we can touch on two stories both coming out of john deere in terms of acquisitions and our top story on agprofessional.com in march was about john deere's acquisition of the spanish-based carbon fiber manufacturer king agro now you're wondering why is john deere interested in a carbon fiber manufacturer and that's because the material has a higher strength to weight ratio compared to steel and aluminum and carbon fiber spray booms are up to 30 percent lighter so they can be extended to greater widths without in increasing that sprayer's weight. John Deere has offered King Agro's carbon fiber booms as an option on its sprayers since 2015 via a partnership. And now with this acquisition, we might be seeing more carbon carbon fiber booms out there in the country. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about uh, efficiency and and covering as much much ground as you possibly can in those lighter booms. Minimizing the footprint. You got it. You minimize the footprint. That's exactly right. Margie, thanks. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Chip. You bet. You bet. Okay. It's a Farmer Forum on today's AgriTalk. We've got Ken McCauley from Kansas, Kevin Papp from Minnesota, and Senator Mike Johans coming up next on AgriTalk. Every season, you try to raise the bar to achieve your best soybean yield ever. But frog eye leaf spot, brown spot, aerial blight, and white mold can get in your way. New Delaro fungicide will help you fight them. Delaro delivers unmatched preventative and curative defense against yield-robbing diseases. So your varieties will have the protection they need to help you achieve personal best yields. Keep raising the bar with Delaro from Bayer. Always read and follow label instructions. Putting in a hard day's work, doing the right thing, treating people with respect. American Values is true as the wind that blows through our farms. 
For nearly 30 years, there's been an American company working side-by-side with farmers to harness the power of wind, creating local jobs and new reliable sources of income for small towns. We are Next Era Energy Resources, an American company proud to bring clean, renewable energy home. Learn more at nexteraenergyresources.com. Sorting through information on weed resistance is hard work. FJWeedControlSolutions.com is the answer. Farm Journal partnered with Bayer to create your go-to source for up-to-date, concise weed control solutions. Listen to some of the latest advice shared. Giving your crops a competitive edge helps reduce weeds and increase herbicide effectiveness. Certain cultural weed management practices help you do this by promoting early, vigorous crop growth. Four key cultural weed management tools include crop rotation, planting dates, row spacing, and cover crops. Visit us online to find out more about these critical components of a good weed management program, as well as other valuable cultural weed management tips. See the whole story and more at fjweedcontrolsolutions.com. Fresh updates to keep you on top of today's fast-changing weed control news. Timely and accurate information from sources you can depend on. Visit fjweedcontrolsolutions.com. Brought to you by Farm Journal and Bayer. What do you think, sweets? Should I wear this dress or the green dress tonight? (coughs) Oh, really? You thought the green one looked better? (coughs) This is the green dress. I swear. Your Farm Dog USA assistant won't be able to help your wife make intelligent fashion decisions. But he will be able to help around the farm by picking up drop tools, managing your herd, and opening latch gates. Learn more at farmdog.org. That's P-H-A-R-M dog dot org. Hi, I'm Ag Day host Clinton Griffiths, and I invite you to join me each morning as we cover the nation's food system, from fields of green to orchards of orange and livestock everywhere in between. America runs on agriculture, and here at Ag Day, agriculture is what we do best. Listen as our analysts track the markets, learn about innovations in technology and sustainability, and live the country lifestyle through the eyes of rural America. Join me, Clinton Griffiths, for Ag Day, the country experience. You're listening to AgriTalk. One hour every day, just ag. It's all we do. Join the conversation. That's right. We do want you to join the conversation, so give us a call. It's 855-4-TALK-AG, 855-482-5524. Or you can tweet at me, and when you do, make sure that you include hashtag AgriTalk. It's a farmer forum on today's show. We've got Ken McCauley from White Cloud, Kansas, on the line. Ken, welcome back to the show. How you doing today, bud? Oh, it's good to be here, Chip. Uh, it's been a it's been a good winter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it just got here a little bit late, and it, it it was pretty easy on the front end, but it's gotten a little tough for some of us on the back end of winter yeah, here. Sure. Sounds yep, like it's no. not over yet either. That's right. That's right. We got some more cold temperatures coming in, and Kevin Papp from Minnesota is going to be right in the middle of those cold temperatures here in the first week of April. How you doing today, Kevin? Welcome. Well, thank you. You know, we're 13 days uh, to our crop insurance corn planting date, but yeah, had over 10 inches of snow Friday night and warm day today at 51, but probably 31 by the weekend. Right. Right. Crazy, crazy weather. Hey, just a reminder, everybody, Ken is the past president of the National Corn Growers Association. Kevin is the current president of the Minnesota Farm Bureau. And now let's bring in a special guest. This is going to be a lot of fun. We've got uh, a former Nebraska governor, former Nebraska senator, uh, former USDA secretary, uh, Senator Mike Johans is joining us today. Senator, thank you so much for making the time to be with us, uh, and welcome to AgriTalk. Well, thank you. I, I have to tell you, I'm glad to be a part of this. And uh, to my colleagues on the phone, it's great to be uh, be on the program with you. Good, good deal. You know, I, I got to admit, uh, Senator, I, I was a little uh, uh, apprehensive about getting you on here because uh, a past senator, past USDA secretary, Honestly, I I didn't know exactly what to call you, but I think I'm just going to go with Senator, if that's okay with you. Well, you know, it works best, and it always has. Uh, Mike, that works very, very well. (laughs) Okay, okay, good stuff. Uh, Now, Kevin, Ken, I've got a couple of questions or topics that I want to kick off here, but you know what to do. When you've got a question, jump right in here. Uh, 
Mike, we've got to start. We've got to start with the trade issues and and the trade policy uh, that we are. Actually, no. We need to start with an update on what you're doing right now. What What are you up to here lately? Gosh, it seems like I'm busier than ever. I've uh, had the good fortune of join, joining a number of boards. Uh, I've mentioned John Deere, OSI, Burlington Capital, uh, Millennium Challenge. <laughs> it kind of goes on and on. Yeah. Um, uh, then I'm doing some work for a company called Alliant Group in Houston, Texas, and we work to help folks in agriculture make sure that they're maximizing the benefits of the research and development tax credits. So okay. that one has got me really excited. We've we've saved farmers and people in production agriculture a tremendous amount of money because um, the tax credit, the research and development tax credit, generally isn't on the radar screen for agriculture. So Mm -hmm. my role is to tell that story. And uh, my goodness, it's been, it's been great. It's been successful and we've helped bring some, some money to the bottom line, if you will. Okay. Very, very interesting. What is that story that, uh, that you're with the new tax reform package that, uh, that that's in effect for 2018. I'm sure that there's a lot of stories that, that, that you're focused on right now then. Well, actually, the research and development tax credit actually dates back to the Reagan years. Okay. Uh, Ronald Reagan wanted to boost the economy, and so they passed this, and it's been improved over time continuously. Now it's a permanent feature of the tax code. That was done in 2015, right after I left the Senate, as a matter of fact. And so uh, Anyone who is out there in uh, production, agriculture, food processing, agronomy, whatever, that is improving processes or doing development work or just a whole host of things that they can be doing, they can qualify for the research and development tax credit. And it's an actual dollar-for-dollar credit offset against your taxes. So... Uh, you know, fertilizer combinations, feed combinations. I mean, it, it's hand in glove, perfectly suited for agriculture. It's just not been on the radar screen. So that's what I'm doing with Alliant Group. And uh, like I said, it's been very successful. Once we explain it to folks, once we get people engaged in what it's about, then Almost without fail, we find that they qualify almost without fail if they have been claiming it, they've been under claiming it. So it it has been an exciting piece of my life for the past year. I just joined them about a year ago. Very interesting. Uh, Mike, I think I can hear the uh, the keystrokes out there across the countryside with people Googling the Alliant Group right now, uh, seeing if they might, might uh, be able to get some benefit from it. So... Interesting, interesting work that yeah. you're doing there. That's, yeah. that's, and thanks for saying that, because that's exactly what we want people to do. Just just Google AlliantGroup.com. We'll get you in touch with a real live person in the snap of the fingers, and um, we'll talk to you, like I said, whether you're in food processing or fertilizer or production agriculture, we'll get people to answer your questions. And like I said, more often than not, we we find people qualify oh. for the credit. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's got to be very rewarding uh, work out there, Mike. Uh, uh, let's talk about this trade policy. When you see what's going on in the uh, Trump administration with all the tactics that he's using, what's your thought process? Well, you know, I, I look at uh, China, for example, uh, or NAFTA, you know, you could look at Canada too. Uh, Canada is our number one agriculture trading partner, but China's close behind. And uh, the worrisome part of this is that for every uh, action, there's going to be a reaction. So you put tariffs on steel and aluminum, guess what? You're going to get tariffs on other products. And we saw that from China. The unfortunate thing is, um, the Chinese, whoever, they know where to hit us where it hurts, and that's in the agriculture sector. So all of a sudden you start reading about tariffs being imposed on agricultural products, and and at a time when the farm economy has just not been good, and it's not been good for a few years here because prices have been so darn low, um, this is a double hit. Uh, 
and and I know in ag country and in, in rural America, small town America, it, it people voted heavily for Donald Trump because they thought he could get some things done. And and uh, so I'm not saying anything that would be critical of the president or his administration. I'm just mm-hmm. saying you got to really pay attention to what you're doing here. Or are you going to hurt a very, very important sector in the nation's economy? Yeah. Ken, Kevin, have you got any questions for uh, Mike? Well, I, I do. This is Kevin. Uh, um, I do have a question. You know, we, we talked a lot. You've talked about uh, using the word former and past and everything else for, for the senator. Uh, one thing I know that he's, he's not uh, former. He's a current champion for agriculture. In fact, mm-hmm. um I had the opportunity in my hometown um, to, to host the, the secretary, Secretary Joe Hans, um, at my local ethanol plant. Uh, actually, we drove around in our Minnesota soy biodiesel suburban mm-hmm. um, when he was secretary, <laughs> seeing the importance of renewable fuels. And we talked about all those things that concern us in agriculture. What My question is, what do we need to be doing as farmers out here to help ensure the importance and people understand how important the RFS is and we need to continue to move forward with that. Well, and I remember that and uh, boy, invite me back. I'd I'd love to come visit you again, but uh, here's what I would say. Uh, I could tell the last couple of years that I was in the Senate that the attacks on um, the renewable fuel standard were just becoming uh, more and more uh, frequent, more and more critical. Um, some were arguing that l- let's uh, figure out a different way to uh, cap the RINs, and 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 then all of a sudden uh, we would be in trouble in in the biofuels, the the ethanol industry. So here's what we have to do. Number one, we've got to tell the story. This is one of the most positive things that I think has happened. Um, it lessens our dependence on on uh, on uh, foreign oil. It has been so good for agriculture across the country. State after state has benefited from uh, renewable fuels, whether it's the ethanol plant or the jobs that are created or uh, whatever. And, and it's helped the Main Street America. We we just got to get better information out about what impact it's had and how positive it's been. The other thing we have to do is we need to make sure that the people that we put in Congress understand that, too. So, you know, if you've got somebody out there running for the Senate or House, we want them to be the champions. So we got to educate them just like you educated me. Yeah, very good. Senator, I know that you're busy, but if it's possible and you can stick around for the next segment, I'd love to talk a little bit of Farm Bill. If you can't, I completely understand, and I want to thank you for joining us today. I'll I'll stick around if that's all right. Awesome. Awesome. That is great. We've got more with Ken, Kevin, and and Mike next. Hey, Bill, any advice to control tough weeds and rootworms? That's easy, Jim. Buy two, save three. Wait, for weeds and rootworms? Buy two, save three. Combine your Impact or new Impact Z herbicide purchase with a qualifying insecticide and save $3 per acre. Buy two, save three. That is good advice. For details, go to buy2save3.com. Impact, Impact Z, and Buy 2, Save 3 are trademarks owned by Amvac Chemical Corporation. All rights reserved. Impact Z is a restricted-use pesticide. Always read and follow label instructions. Learn how third-generation farmer John Olerking uses Climate Field View to help build the legacy he hopes to leave behind. When the farm was transitioned over to me, it was like, holy cow, there's a lot of pressure on me to make this thing succeed, and still is. It's exciting at the same time that now that we have some of those tools to figure out how to improve. To hear more of John's story, visit climate.com. Climate Field View services provide estimates or recommendations and do not guarantee results. More information at climate.com slash disclaimers. Time for Markets Now with the experts from Pro Farmer. And Pro Farmer editor Brian Grady is rushing into the office right now. How you doing, Beach? Oh, I'm great, Jim. Good, good, good. A little bit of pressure on corn and soybeans today, some strength in the wheat. What's going on? Well, I, I don't think it's anything but uh, just pre-report trade here. Uh, we're getting ready. Uh, corn and beans, a little bit of price pressure, like you mentioned. Not surprising. Funds are still long, uh, those markets, so uh, we could see a little bit more liquidation there, I think, uh, ahead of the reports. But so far, just fractional to penny losses in both of those contracts. 
on the uh, flip side in the wheat market, uh, you know, the rains in the plains have yeah. been a little bit disappointing. So we've seen some moisture, but uh, surface level stuff, uh, this isn't going to alleviate the drought. And uh, as a result, I think uh, we're seeing traders cover up short positions a little bit there. Yeah, boy, some of the comments that we saw on Twitter over the last 24 hours, it rained, but it didn't rain enough. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. it's more on radar than, than yep. what it has been meaningful precept. Exactly, exactly. You know, this cattle market, the way that it absolutely gave up in the last 10 minutes yesterday, so frustrating. It has been, and, and you know, it's it's going to be, I think, uh, more of the same until we get some strength in that cash market. Yep. We've seen the cash market yep. soften, and, and the early indications are significantly again this week. So, yeah. um, you know, until we get that cash market to, to firm up and give traders a reason to buy with conviction, uh, you know, we're probably going to see just limited upside and, uh, you know, willing sellers show up when we do firm it up. Are the numbers really coming right now on the cattle side? Yeah, I, I, and that's the concern, yeah. and it, it feels like it's it's just going to be heavy through spring, so uh, demand is going to be key, obviously. Yeah, there. not a lot happening in the hogs today. Well, we are seeing a little bit of short covering in the deferred contracts, and, and uh, you know, it's very similar to the cattle situation, I think, there. All right, thank you, Brian. That is Pro Farmer Editor Brian Grady. So, Mr. Woof, is it? <laughs> Are you absolutely sure you want to take your money out of this strategic financial portfolio and put it all into dog toys? Your Farm Dog USA assistant won't be able to make savvy financial decisions for you, but he will be able to help around the farm by picking up drop tools, managing your herd, and opening latch gates. Learn more at pharmdog.org. Find it now at ShopFarmJournal.com. Brand new to the shop is the best of Tractor Tales, as seen each week on U.S. Farm Report. This two-DVD set features dozens of classic machines and the collectors who bring them back to life. You'll get one DVD that's all green, the best of John Deere. The second DVD includes classics like Alice Chalmers and many more. Buy one DVD for $29.95 or buy the set for $49.95. Order today at ShopFarmJournal.com or call toll-free 877-847-9599. You can find it now at ShopFarmJournal.com. Your vote could help a community organization win $10,000 and send a farmer on a dream sports trip. Vote now and help make dreams come true at PowerToDoMore.com. Sponsored by Resicor Corn Herbicide. Can get ready. We're going to come to you here first. Welcome back to AgriTalk, everyone. I'm your host, Chip Flory. It's a farmer forum. We've got Ken McCauley from Kansas, Kevin Papp from Minnesota, and former Secretary and uh, Senator Mike Johans from Nebraska on the line with us. Uh, uh, Mike, thank you so much for sticking around for another segment here. Uh, really appreciate that. Ken, I don't think I've ever heard you this quiet. What's going on over there? You got any questions? Well, you know, I've been out of touch for a while, so I just I was fiddling with my with my with my mute button, and I didn't get on, so Kevin beat me to the punch. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say hi to. Senator Johans, I got a lot of fond memories of our of our uh, 2008 farm bill, the energy bill, and all that. But uh, I'd have to say your job be a little tougher keeping keeping your party in line today. I think uh, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think you're right. I, <laughs> when we get to uh, the part about the farm bill, I'll talk a little bit about that. But yeah, yeah it get you know it got tougher. I think every year I was there. Yeah, well, I appreciate your support. It's it's been good. I I'd like to. Uh, you know, it's maybe called to arms here on on uh, all of the farmers out there. I think we're more united than we've been in a long time with this with this Rens debate and and really a lot of issues. But we need to keep that up. And I think uh, the farmers listening out there today would hearing it from you would would be a a big big help to keep everybody charged up because this Rens thing and keeping the RFS in place and everybody understands if we don't have the RFS at full full strength we we're going to lose lose a lot of farmers because this it's really important to keep that demand for for the biofuels yeah you know if we lose that um it won't take very long to figure out the impact it will have on the rural economy and it it, as i said it's not just the local ethanol plant or the jobs that are there that's hugely important but what ethanol has done to the rural economy has just been nothing short of remarkable. I started working the ethanol issue when I was governor of Nebraska. We did a 
incentive program to build ethanol plants in Nebraska. And we brought Nebraska the second largest producer of ethanol in the country. And all of a sudden, towns were revitalizing because there was some money finally on Main Street. So uh, it is called arms because um, no doubt about it, biofuel policy is, is under attack. You, you just see it every every day and so whatever we can do to make the case that this is this has really been good for rural america i i just feel strongly that we've got to do that and and also you know the not only making another market for for corn and soybeans but corn mainly at an ethanol plant i think you've got more ownership as from farmers that actually know where their corn's going and what it, what's coming out the other end of where they where they dump the unload their grain because i've seen that a lot uh you know our our corn goes to an ethanol plant right over here and it yeah. i think it's made a lot of a lot of difference in pride of of the ownership in agriculture yes. also yep Ken, yeah that's a, and then the byproduct goes down the road to feed cattle so yeah. yeah it's been a heck of a deal yeah yeah ken that's a that point is is well taken here uh i hear the same thing from from growers in Iowa, I hear this, hey, Kevin. I know you hear the same thing up in Minnesota too, don't you? Absolutely. You know, and it is important this this call to arms. We've got trade concerns in agriculture. We've got added value concerns, whether it's animal agriculture, the renewable fuel standard. We also got this farm bill. We heard as recently yeah. as as last night at a farm bureau meeting from Congressman Peterson. You know, he says yeah. he's not hearing from farmers about the farm bill and. The importance on that and it is it's so important that 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 everybody that's listening contact their elected officials let them know they need to get get in gear on this yeah yep speaking of the farm bill um representatives conaway and peterson were it it seemed like they were making great progress on the new bill but that all of a sudden just it, – it seems to have come to a screeching screeching halt, Senator. What do you think happened? They, they were making great progress, and they're, they're two really good guys. Yes. I mean, I've worked with both of them through the years, and, and uh, uh, I just like them both, and I think they're very sincere about wanting to get a farm bill done and wanting to come to an agreement, but – Here's the issue for both of them. They have a constituency in the House, and satisfying that constituency is key to getting them to vote yes on the farm bill. Now, I've seen Conaway's, Chairman Conaway's statements that he's ready to go, just all Republicans get this done, and the majority in the House is Republican, so he could do that. But I know in his heart of hearts, he realizes that yep. farm bills are bipartisan. And you can't do it that way in the Senate because there's yep. just a very slim majority of Republicans in the Senate. So it's got to be a bipartisan bill. And if the House members are saying don't vote for the bill, then that's likely what's going to happen in the Senate. So. At the end of the day, they're going to have to figure out what to do about the SNAP program and how right. far they can go and get as much done as they can get done, but then start rounding up the votes to get the farm bill done. And that's where we've stalled. It's, you know, um, it's, it's not an acceptable bill at the moment uh, to get bipartisan support in the House because of the SNAP issues primarily. That's going to be the challenge also uh, on the Senate side. So uh, one way or another, they're going to have to figure that out or the farm bill doesn't get done this year. And they're running out of time because the elections yeah. will start dominating uh, the whole discussion here. Right, right. Uh, when when you were working on that 2008 farm bill, I know that you knew that in, that nutrition title inside and out, Senator. Uh, is there room for some reform on the SNAP program? Yeah, uh, in fact, there's probably, um, there would be more desire on my part today for reform than I could probably get done. Again, just being realistic about it. At the end of the day, you've got to get bipartisan votes to get a farm bill done. But the answer to your question is yes, absolutely. Let's see how much reform we can get done, because there is 
room for reform. I do think it's been a good program. I think it has great support in ag country. I don't have any doubts about that. I mean, farmers are in the business of feeding people. The challenge is it it just got so out of whack during the Obama years. It just... You know, and we've we've got to do as much as we can to get that reformed, but we can't lose sight of what we're trying to accomplish here. At the end of the day, we also need a farm bill. Otherwise, I think what you're going to see is uh, people are going to say, well, we just can't get it done, and uh, we'll get into those one-year extensions, and farmers will be saying, well, what about year two? And that's the problem, and I lived through that when I was the United States senator uh, for a while there, all we could get was um, an extension and until we finally got a farm bill passed. And that's that just provides a lot of uncertainty for agriculture to do it that way. We need a five-year farm bill. Yeah. Kevin, Ken, what, what what's your thoughts on the farm bill moving forward? Well, this is Ken. I, I think... I, <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty tough, but I, I still think it, we can accomplish it. I, I think the the SNAP issue is going to be a big one, and it really upsets me that the the food uh, hunger people, you know, can't just stand up and say, "Yeah, we we can we can agree with something," because they want to hold the line. And, and I've got some friends in that in that business over here close to home, and you know, the local side of it, it's politics there too. But the local side of it is, yeah, we can we can deal with some reform, but when you get to the actual D.C. part and and mm-hmm. making the law, the, you come right back to toe the line and get all you can get. And I guess that's the way associations work. Yeah. Kevin? Well, I think, you know, we, we know in agriculture farmers understand working together works. We work with our neighbors. Farm groups work together to be successful. Um, elected officials need to work together, and and hopefully we can get the the ag committees uh, into that mentality that working together really does work. That's how we can get things done for the good of all, and just would encourage everybody to sit down at the table and let's figure this thing out sooner rather than later. Right, right. Uh, is that, you know, go ahead. That makes a lot of sense because. It is an alliance that gets this done. I, you know, I often get asked, should we split out the nutrition piece, the the food piece uh, from the farm bill? Well, you can't do that because you need those folks right. to get it done. So at the end of the day, this is a marriage, and it might be a pretty uneasy one to be very blunt about it. But somehow, some way, in order to get this farm bill done, people are going to have to come to the table, sit down, and, and try to figure out what the solution is. Nobody should expect to get their way 100% of the time. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Well, luckily, we've got uh, two congressmen in charge of this farm bill in Conway and Peterson that have a history of working by, in, in a bipartisan way to make things happen. So uh, it gives me a little bit of, of hope that we can see some progress before the elections. But like you said, Senator, we're running out of time on this, and we're running out of time on on this segment. Uh, uh, Senator, you've been more than generous with your time this morning with us. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on to AgriTalk, and, and, and I hope that, that you can do it again because, like Kevin said, we know that you're a champion for agriculture, and we want to get your voice heard on AgriTalk as often as we can. Well, great. I'd, I'd look forward to that. And, Ken, Kevin, uh, nice to be reacquainted and have have a great planning season. Thanks, Max. Good talking to you. All right. That thank you, Senator. That is uh, former Senator Mike Johans. He's also a former governor of Nebraska and the former Secretary of the United States Department of Agriculture. Priority list. That's what we're going to talk about with Kevin and Kent next on AgriTalk. Find it now at ShopFarmJournal.com. Brand new to the shop is the best of tractor tales as seen each week on U.S. Farm Report. This two-DVD set features dozens of classic machines and the collectors who bring them back to life. You'll get one DVD that's all green, the best of John Deere. The second DVD includes classics like Alice Chalmers and many more. Buy one DVD for $29.95 or buy the set for $49.95. Order today at ShopFarmJournal.com or call toll-free 877-847-9599. You can find it now at ShopFarmJournal.com. 
you for calling XYZ Financial. To pay your credit card bill, say, hey, Bill. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't understand you. To speak with an operator, press zero. Gracias por elegir español. Para pagar su factura de tarjeta de crédito. Your Farm Dog USA assistant won't be able to pay your credit card bill, but he will be able to help around the farm by picking up dropped tools, managing your herd, and opening latch gates. Learn more at PHARMDog.org. You're going to need me. You're going to need us. All of us. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food. You're going to need our determination, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Today, 4-H is growing the next generation of leaders. Support us at 4-H.org. Hi, I'm Ag Day host Clinton Griffiths, and I invite you to join me each morning as we cover the nation's food system, from fields of green to orchards of orange and livestock everywhere in between. America runs on agriculture, and here at Ag Day, agriculture is what we do best. Listen as our analysts track the markets, learn about innovations in technology and sustainability, and live the country lifestyle through the eyes of rural America. Join me, Clinton Griffiths, for Ag Day, the country experience. Ten finalists, three winners, it's all up to you. Have you voted yet? We asked farmers to show us the power on their farms. And now ten finalists have a chance to win a Dream Sports trip and help their communities with a $10,000 donation to build or revitalize a sports field or community space. See our finalists and vote now at PowerToDoMore.com. Sponsored by Resicor Corn Herbicide. They say to really know a man, you have to walk a mile in his boots. Well, my channel Seedsman has logged more miles than I can count in mine. Every spring, we hit my fields together at the first sight of green. Six weeks later, he's out here again checking roots, stalks, soil, like they were his own. As crops grow, so does his commitment to making sure there's nothing overlooked. Nutrients, weed control, pests, disease. He gets an agronomist to weigh in whenever we need a second opinion. The whole time, using the latest technology to document where we've been and decide where we're going. Wheels always turning. And come harvest, we celebrate in the cab. Him working away making plans for next season. That, my friends, is what they call seedsmanship at work. Look, anybody can sell you seed. Only a channel seedsman gives you everything you need to make the most of it. Find yours at channel.com slash boots. Every season, you try to raise the bar to achieve your best corn yield ever. But disease can stand in the way, like gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, anthracnose leaf blight, and southern rust. New Delaro fungicide can stop them. Two different modes of action work on the diseases for the entire spray interval, delivering best-in-class dual-mode-of-action residual efficacy for extended performance. It's the help you need for personal best yields. Keep raising the bar with Delaro from Bayer. Always read and follow label instructions. United Soybean Board and the Soy Checkoff have always had a mission for 25 years of profit opportunities for soybean farmers. USB's mission revolves around both profit opportunities short term and profit opportunities long term. So when we think about a longer term view of how farmers are going to be profitable, we think about cutting edge things, uh, constituent value for example, the value of the components of the bean, the meal, the oil. We think about sustainability as far as both economic sustainability and environmental sustainability so that our farmers can be profitable today and the next gen farmers can be profitable tomorrow. Specifically, United Soybean Board likes to fund things like uh, technology advances and genetics advances in things like protein for meal and uh, better kinds of oil and new uses for oil like the Hyatt Lake Project. We're always thinking about today and about tomorrow at United Soybean Board and thinking about how we can best serve our investor farmers. AgriTalk is sponsored by Next Era Energy Resources, an American company working side by side with farmers and ranchers to harness the power of the wind and create local jobs for small towns. Learn more at nexteraenergyresources.com. Welcome back to AgriTalk, everyone. It's a farmer forum with the added benefit of former Senator 
Mike Johans on the line today. We've got uh, Ken McCauley from Kansas, Kevin Papp from Minnesota. Guys, how cool was that, being able to talk to Mike Johans? That was great, Chip. I just really, really good good having the senator on and being on with the senator. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great you know, advocate for agriculture, no doubt about it. You know, Kevin, I was thinking the same thing, because when you've got a guy with the amount of experience – as a as a, a a former mayor of Lincoln, I didn't even mention that, but former governor of Nebraska, former senator from Nebraska, USDA secretary, that is a guy that if he if there was anybody that had the right to just walk out of Washington D.C., throw their hands in the air and say, you know what, I'm done with that. That it's Mike Johans, but he hasn't done that. He's still involved in the industry, and Kevin. We got to rely on people like that because just because of the experience that they've got to help guide us as as a farm community through the through the year ahead. You know, yes, he he's, he's a great person. He's a real champion. Uh, sometime I ask him the question about uh, when he uh, walked in on a wedding party uh, after a parade, and he talks about uh, all the things that that he does not only for Nebraska. But for this country, he's just he's a great guy, a great advocate and people that we need telling that story about agriculture to other folks as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys, uh, what's going on on your farms? Ken, you got to be a little bit closer to putting some seed in the ground than what than what Kevin is right now. Well, I went to the big lunch table yesterday, Chip. Yeah. Planters are hooked up They're ready to roll there's actually been some soybeans planted due to all the media and twitter frenzy i think that uh, i i hate to say i hope something doesn't work but planting <laughs> soybeans in march just doesn't sound like the right thing to do to me but uh, i don't i haven't seen any corn in the ground yet but i tell you what everybody's hooked up ready to go our two planters uh, brad's got them got them ready to roll and so does everybody else so you know we've got a little bit of rain we could sure use more uh, our yeah. subsoil is pretty low but uh, it's it's always better to plant in dry drier soil than wetter soil you know that right right ken when do you usually roll on corn planting well there's a lot of guys start the first week of april and i don't see that happening this year being as cold and wet but uh, uh the second week of april you won't get anybody to talk to you about anything else yeah. but planting corn. They won't even go to lunch. So right. that's uh, that's the big week from then on. Try to be done before the end of April and roll right into beans. Gotcha. Gotcha. Kevin, what's the priority up on your farm? Getting the snow off the ground? <laughs> well, I think the, the number one priority, at least for me personally, is, is getting the farmers to understand some cover-ups are good. Um, okay. You know, and when I say some com- cover-ups are good, I'm talking about seed. And we've got a real push in Minnesota with our Department of Natural Resources. They've been doing some surveys. They've been identifying some seed spills uh, as potential threats to birds and wildlife. We've got yeah. our battles with the neonics and the treated seed with the pollinator community. And, and we really got to think about this spring that that if we do have a seed spill, we've got to clean it up or we've got to cover it up. You know, our rake is going to be our best friend in the seed tender because people are watching and there's a lot of people that want to eliminate treated seed um, altogether, and we've got to have that to protect our investment. Interesting. Interesting. Ken, is that an issue down in Kansas as well? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. I've heard a lot about the, you know, the bees and the birds and all that stuff, and Birds and bees were all in my mind a lot back when I was younger. But uh, <laughs> I wondered if you were going there. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's got a really good point. I hadn't thought about it, but you know, if everybody put a rake on their seed tender, it would make a big difference. And you see a bag of seed, you know, blown off the truck or something on the highway. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty important. It's something I hadn't thought about. So we'll we'll sure talk about that too. All right, Kevin, who's who, who's making that an issue? Uh, well, the the DNR has done a two year study, okay. and they estimate that there's over fifteen thousand what they consider a large seed spill. Now that's a thousand seeds or more, so that's not a lot in the right. in the thing. But this is a, a threat to birds and wildlife. But what my big concern is, 
is we've got some people in the pollinator community that, that are not fans of treated seed, that are not fans of neonics or all pesticides, and they're going to use this against us. And it's such an easy fix. Every one of us can do this to just to clean up or cover up those seed spills to make sure that uh, we, we, we protect our, our seed investment, but also we don't get additional regulations and just yeah. asking everybody to cover up those seed spills this spring. Yeah, that's that that's a, a really nice uh, reminder, Kevin, because it's it's not like you can have the spill and just drive away from it, because if there are people out there looking for those spills to advance uh, to to advance their issue, it's pretty easy to see it. It is, and it, it's, it's seed stewardship altogether. It's uh, yeah. the storage, the filling, transport, planting, cleaning up, disposable. A lot of good information uh, out there on the website, seedtreatmentguide.com. Um, lots of good information. Just want everybody to be aware of that, and, and let's fix this within the family. Okay, you say that website again, Kevin. The, the website is seedtreatmentguide.com, but just... Got Quite it. frankly, you Google some BMPs on seed stewardship, and you'll find what you need. Gotcha, gotcha. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Ken, I always look forward to the conversations, and, and I know that uh, we'll have you back on here pretty soon. Great, Chip. Thanks for having me. It's good. Nice to be on with the Secretary. You bet. You bet it was. Kevin, good luck to you this spring getting stuff in the ground, and uh Uh, Good luck with the Farm Bureau up there. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. All right. That's Kevin Papp from Minnesota, Ken McCauley from uh, Kansas. Thank you to Senator Mike Johans from Nebraska for joining us today, this afternoon on AgriTalk After the Bell. I'm going to be on the road, but Joe Vaklovic is going to have a conversation with Pete Meyer from S&P Global. They'll get you up to speed with what's going on in the markets and and get you ready for Thursday's USDA reports. And tomorrow morning on AgriTalk, more on the Farm Bill, Vice Chairman of the House Ag Committee, Congressman G.T. Thompson. You all have a great day. The mighty Prosaro, king of fungicides. Its fast action and long residual make it the keeper of grain quality and yield, the hammer of head and leaf diseases, the number one reducer of scab. When your goal is greater wheat quality and higher yield, use Prosaro fungicide, and the crown of higher profit will be yours. Learn more at prosaro.us. Always read and follow label instructions. Putting in a hard day's work, doing the right thing, treating people with respect. American values as true as the wind that blows through our farms. For nearly 30 years, there's been an American company working side-by-side with farmers to harness the power of wind, creating local jobs and new reliable sources of income for small towns. We are Next Era Energy Resources, an American company, proud to bring clean, renewable energy home. Learn more at nexterraenergyresources.com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com.